stand up, stand out. Oh, stand up, stand out. Be magnificent today. Stand up, stand out. And so, so who is this? That's me, many years ago. I think, I don't even know how many years ago. Oh, wow. And a lot of kilos less. <laughs> so are you talking five years ago? Um, let's see, uh, 10, 10, 12 years ago. Yeah? Yeah, yep. Okay, and where was that? Okay, it was, um, it was actually for a, a hair show. Yeah. Um, that was that was my hair design that I did myself, but a hairdresser stole the. You know, she said, "Can I use you in my hair?" Oh really? Um, hair show. And I'm like, yeah, sure, okay. Um, you got gypped. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I just kept that photo. It was a good photo of showing, you know, what I used to look like. Yeah, and so tell us about your life back at this time, and mm. yeah, what what you're getting up to at that time. Well. Um, I suppose, yeah, a lot of people look at that photo and think, well, that's really scary. You know, yeah. you've got facial piercings, bald head, and um, I can see that, I don't know if you can tell that I was doing lots of drugs as well. And because um, I was brought up in, you know, a relatively normal, dysfunctional family, mum and dad and, you know, yeah. <laughs> brothers and sisters. And my parents are Christians and they're in the Philippines as missionaries. Yeah. Um, but um, when I was 17, I was in a house fire and my friends died in that, so I was the only survivor. So I just, su I suffered with post-traumatic stress disorder because I was in a coma for a while and, um, you know, had a few burns and stuff. But, um, so yeah, I had post-traumatic stress disorder, but also was, just had the guilt of being the only survivor. And that was at 17, so what happened was I eventually, you know, I'm cutting this really short, but mm. I eventually just found myself on drugs and alcohol um, just really low self-worth, just thought I was not really worthy of, you know, even existing really. I, I didn't wow. feel worthy of having friends because I didn't save my friends. And, um, and then because of being in that lifestyle, I sort of got a bit hurt by men. So I ended up becoming a lesbian as well. And it was a choice for me to do that. What um, age were you then? I was um, around 19, 20 when I when that happened, when I decided to, you know, ne I, I sort of made a vow that I'd never let a man touch me again. And, wow. um, and so, yeah, so I got right into the gay scene and, um, and yeah, just, uh, I mean, it started off with alcohol for me, like the, after the fire, I just got into binge drinking mm -hmm. every night because I couldn't sleep unless I blacked out just from anxiety. And, um, and then that, Led, you know, it's like the, the old doorway, you open one doorway and there's just that, that one, another one waiting for you to open. And that, for me, I just kept opening them and just kept getting, you know, darker and darker and de more depressed and my lifestyle just became more debauched. I used to think that I was a really horrible person um, and re qu quite disturbed really when I think back because I would think, if someone was nice to me, I'd think, why, why are you being nice to me? Like, don't you know, I, I had this attitude of, that I killed my friends. Oh, yeah. And um, even though I didn't kill them, I didn't start the fire, um, but I, I didn't pull them out either. And I was pulled out myself, but I you, you just have that complex. And so I, would, I had that thing of, don't you know I killed my friends? Like, why are you being nice to me? And I yeah. thought I was a really, ugly person, really, really ugly. And I, would, and I would tell myself that all the time, that you, you're just not a nice person. Wow. And yeah. And so that's, that, that, if that's on the inside, all I see on the outside as well is ugliness. Yeah. And so I didn't think that I was attractive or anything, yeah, really low self-esteem. And I guess we're in a really competitive world as well, where mm. physical appearance is valued above everything else, yep. and there's so much pressure put on everyone, and especially girls, is that true, do you think? Absolutely, definitely. And yeah. did that have an effect on you growing up, and did that kind of influence anything for you? Um, uh, I don't think so, the, mm -hmm. the whole, when you, you look at that photo of me there, um, 
what, what was happening there was that I actually didn't, I wanted to be scary. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't want people to come near me and want to be near me and want to get to know me because I was so insecure and hurting and wounded and I had nothing to give to anyone that I, that I, I realise now, I look back and go, it, debauching myself and making myself harsh looking and, and, mm. and not, not pretty, not beautiful. It was a, a way of just keeping people away from myself. Okay. I was in a headspace where I actually couldn't accept a sense of belonging. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's one of the symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder that you just cannot have people close to you. So I actually pushed my parents away. I pushed my family away and all my friends. And, um, and so the lifestyle that I went into was a very shallow, really, really shallow lifestyle where um, that there was no real sense of belonging. I was living in Sydney um, with my girlfriend of three years. We'd been living together for three years and, and I had a bit of a God experience and he spoke to me for the first time and just all he said was, you know, leave Sharon and move back to Newcastle. Not anything else. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I, really, I knew it was God, it was in my heart. I just knew that I had to do that and, and I did do it and I was, and it was like, a, I, I can't explain it other than that it was God because I was instantly transformed that day, not even being a Christian. I was instantly just not attracted to women at, at all. It, it was a, absolutely bizarre, but it was also heart wrenching because I really loved Sharon. She was a beautiful girl um, and we had a wonderful friendship. And so that was really heart wrenching. But I moved back to Newcastle and yeah. um, I got off the ice and went back onto the speed. So that was sort of a step, <laughs> step oh, yeah. down from the really nasty stuff. And I thought, well, I'll give up the drugs before I go to church. Um, and a year later, I still hadn't given up the drugs. And so I was still, still you know, living that lifestyle. And, and it was just really amazing. I, I, I'm really against people preaching, going out and Bible bashing yeah. because I know the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, you know, I was driving my car and I could, I can remember singing these songs that were kids' songs. You know, like he's got the whole world in his hands. Yeah. And I'm thinking, what on earth? Where, where did that song come from? It, what is it? You know, I'd never been brought up in a church. Mm. I, I never went to church, and Mum and Dad didn't become Christians till I was in high school. Yeah. And I just rejected it straight away. And um, yeah, and um. And I'd, so I'd stop myself from singing it. Then the next day I'd be driving and I'd be singing these songs again. And, and then after about a week, I remembered mum and dad used to, we had a holiday house on the beach and they used to take, drop me off at uh, this mission group. Mm -hmm. And um, they, these were kids songs that I'd learned, yeah. you know, years and years beforehand. And, and, uh, and, and that was the Holy Spirit just gently <laughs> reeling me in. I, I can see that now. Yeah. And cause I thought, wow, I learned those songs when I was a kid. And then I wanted to remember the words, going, oh, what were the next words? And yeah. then that went on for another week, and I just thought, wow, I've got to go to church. I just, I started wanting to sing these songs and wanting to praise God. And, That's wonderful. And, um, yeah, I came to this church. This, this is the only church I've been in. And so that was seven years ago. And, um, and someone was teaching, uh, it was a three-week series. I just start, started coming to church, and they're doing a three-week series on Back to the Gospel. And, um, and it was just all on Jesus. And it was so timely that I came just then. And I can remember going home and just crying. Um, Cause I, I thought, wow, you, you died for me, like for me. You know, I had that revelation of what the, the bigness of what Jesus had done. You went through thoughts and feelings related to the, the uh, traumatic experience that you went through. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that was your fault. You, sh you should have done something to help. Yeah. And I'm, I'm just wondering then, when you came to know God, was he reinforcing that same message of you were, you, it was your fault or did he shed new light on that? Um, um, no, for, for me, I didn't even process anything about fire until about two years ago. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it was just buried really deep. But I sort of, on the surface, I suppose I, I knew that I wasn't 
a hor- I, I came to that place where I thought I'm not a horrible person and and I was a victim but I don't live as a victim anymore you know and um, and there's nothing that I could have done to to change that and you know so I did come into that you know that knowledge and um, but just also knowing that I, I probably should have died in that fire and um, and God actually did pull me out of that fire. He, yeah. he, he's, and so that made me feel pretty special. Yeah. And even though um, I had so many of mum and dad's friends saying, oh, you know, after the fire, oh, God saved you from that. Yeah. And, you know, I'd go, yeah, yeah. Uh, I didn't really know it, but um, I know after, um, after being a Christian for a few weeks, um, just stewing over it going wow you know I get butterflies we thinking fly. about the fact that it's what we I didn't I didn't know Jesus when that fire happened you know and do. and God actually saved me searching for something that's true I, I went and got counseling two years after I'd become a Christian and so I still <laughs> had so much to sort through like that was years and years of abuse you know, me abusing myself and, mm-hmm. and of mindsets that had to be changed. And is like psychologically abusing yourself? Um, through drug abuse, her, whatever, you know, like everything that had happened to me over those years from living that kind of lifestyle. Because even just the way you said that to me, it sounded like almost punishing yourself. Oh, and I was. I was totally punishing myself. Really? Yeah. So you're saying the drug taking was like a form of punishment? Well, it is, it is in a sense because as soon as as soon as you feel I, I believe it's a it's not it's not good enough to it's like us feeding the homeless you know what I do for a living here um, and I say to people you can't just go up to someone and say you need to give up drugs okay because it's not good um, you can't just do that because they they're not feeling worthy of living a normal lifestyle so one thing is they're addicted. Secondly, they're using the drugs to band-aid something, um, you know, whether it's abuse through their childhood or something bad happened, like with me, the fire. So drugs are always a, a band-aid for something. Mm-hmm. Um, secondly, they they they're not they don't feel worthy, and um, and so we have to show them that they are worthy and build and build start building into their life before you can take the drugs away. Mm. And um, and so yeah, I definitely didn't. Uh, you, you can definitely see that drugs are a form of abuse. Mm. That you know, yeah. Because oh, if you had a high self-esteem and thought, "I am worthy," and you know, God's created me wonderfully and you know, perfectly, and um, you wouldn't take drugs because you wouldn't want to abuse that. Here's here's Nikki Gibson. Uh, <laughs> when people look at her, some people would be afraid and just think, "Well, who is that?" And then. You yourself said that inside you felt ugly and not yeah. like a beautiful woman. How did your creator see you when you were like this? Oh, he, uh, he would have seen me as beautiful but very wounded. Like he would have, uh, I, I imagine, you know, him just crying for me because mm-hmm. I was so, you know, uh, wounded by just situations that, that had happened and, and so hurt and... Um, you know, I, I sort of imagined that he was just there with his hands out going, I love you and I created you and you're beautiful, but I just couldn't hear it. Getting up in the morning knowing that God loves you and believes in you and feels and, and thinks, there's my special little girl. How's it like facing a day with that truth? Oh, amazing. Absolutely amazing. Well, one thing with taking drugs is, you know, um, it, it gives you a confidence to leave the house. Mm-hmm. So I, I got to the point where I couldn't leave the house unless I had... Um, either speed or ice and because I was just so insecure and I was in a band um, and um, we used to get nicknamed Three Blind Dykes because I was always so drunk and um, or on something because I couldn't be on stage and I was a lead singer I just couldn't be on stage unless I was on something Mm -hmm. Um, where today I don't need that because I I have this confidence 
because I know who I am in Christ. Yeah. And that's amazing. That's an amazing feeling. And you know when you have your friends that don't know Jesus and mm. you're sitting there and you're talking and you go, I just, I just want you to, you know, you want to yeah. tell them, like, all you need is Jesus and you, yeah. <laughs> everything, you know, it's not like your life's perfect, but it's the, you know, he's our creator. So sure. as soon as we know who we are, it, it gives you that instant thing of, okay, I have a right to be here on earth. I have a right to have great health, Mm -hmm. Great relationships, great family. Mm -hmm. You know, you know that you've, you, yeah. Nikki Gibson, thanks so much for everything you shared. It's been really beautiful. What mm -hmm. a what a journey, and yeah. what a special girl you are. You just you just <laughs> shine, and and I'm just really happy that we got the chance to talk about yeah. it because it's going to make a difference to people. Yeah. Thank you for being a blessing. three years old as well as six years old I was sexually molested and um, that caused a lot of distrust and hate. I mean at the time I didn't understand uh, what was going on and um, but from that you know just I guess stemmed um, a fair bit of I don't know darkness in my life mm. yeah. <laughs> Did it trigger feelings of depression early in life? Um, well, at the age of seven, my mum actually found a suicide note from me. Um, and I remember around that time as well, um, just wanting to kill myself. Not uh, necessarily because of the molestation, but just because, you know, I felt I wasn't good enough. For the world. And, um, like, the people that did, you know, all of that to me basically made me feel like I was worthless and, um, yeah, pretty much made it all my fault. And so, yeah, from then I felt worthless and um, that, you know, I didn't deserve any sort of love and that love didn't really exist. So. Did that then uh, end up turning into to anger? Um, yeah, there was a lot of anger, aggression, hatred, everything like that, um, pretty much from that time onwards, um, I remember the first time I went to a counsellor when I was 13 and that was pretty much for like suicidal tendencies at the time. Mm -hmm. um, and just depression in general, um, you know, I just hated the world, hated yeah. myself and um, didn't feel like there was anything worth living for really. Yeah. Yeah. Basically from an early age I distrusted everybody, um, including myself. Um, I distrusted my parents, my friends, um, God, um, and yeah, I just didn't feel like anybody would, you know, really be able to be there for me or anything like that. And um, that distrust sort of, I guess, um, grew and manifested over the years and um, eventually, I mean, I pretty much went into seclusion in, in my room and I uh, would lock myself in my room and never really come out except for meals or whatever. And um, yeah, during that time, um, I think I was about 19, yeah. Um, I started going to Bible studies, just like some friends were inviting me and yeah, they were actually Bible studies with you. and. Um, Pretty much at that time, yeah, I still trusted nobody um, and like, yeah, I, I guess um, after a while I actually started trusting you. Um, you were the first person I actually talked to like, you know, about everything really. And um, I think um, a lot of that had to do with just consistency and um, like, yeah, you actually seemed genuine. <laughs> um, I thought everybody else sort of, I don't know, they just wanted something else from me, so yeah. Um, some of the music that I started listening to, such as like <laughs> Linkin Park, Limp, 
biscuit, um, especially M&M. <laughs> um, like basically when I got depressed, I would, you know, sit in my room and listen to it like blasting away and so that I couldn't really hear anything else and like just um, absorb myself in the lyrics and basically hate myself, hate the world and um, sometimes like when I was extremely depressed, um, you know, I'd start like either cutting myself or scratching myself or whatever and um, generally just, you know, think thoughts of suicide and um, not just that, even homicide sometimes, you know, I want to kill off my family or friends or, you know, just people that I felt at the time. I guess one thing that we could say, I don't know if you can back me up on this, is that we shouldn't try and fill our minds with negative things because it will corrupt mm. our thoughts and make us believe lies about ourselves. Would you agree with me? Yeah, I'd absolutely agree. Yeah. Um, I know that with especially the music that I listen to, um, it didn't help me at all. Um, I basically just got more and more depressed and mm -hmm. more angry and um, yeah, it, it was basically like f uh, just feeding the anger and hatred and um, yeah, and I found that when I did switch music, like when I did start listening to, um, well, just positive music, uh, whether it was classical or even, you know, stuff about God and everything, um, like my attitude seemed to change a fair bit and mm. yeah, my feelings changed a lot and even if I did have, you know, the occasional violent thought or whatever, mm. I um, pretty much dismissed it straight yeah. away. What is it that, about God's love that makes you happy? God's love, like, as I said before, I didn't really believe in love. Um, I thought it was a superficial thing um, that people just said to make you happy or and to get you off their back. Um, and God's love, I found, was unconditional, agape love, you know, like, yeah, Greek word. <laughs> yeah. Um, like he loves you no matter what and you know it's a self-sacrificing love um he doesn't expect you to like be perfect i think once i like eventually figured that out i was also able to um love well not just you know my friends and family but also myself and um like a part of that was you know self like just forgiveness of myself as well as um, people that have wronged me. I was still unsure really um, about trusting God and um, as well as trusting people but it, it became more of a process and mm -hmm. trusting God and as well as people and myself. I think um, it was mostly through my peers um, like when I was able to let go of the distrust, I guess, um, I was able to see that, you know, people did care and they, you know, accepted me for who I was. And um, also, you know, um, I felt that people were less judgmental than, you know, I would have originally thought. And mm -hmm. um, also, like, during that time with Bible studies and stuff, um, when you know I got more into God's word, I was able to see that God, um, you know, just loves me no matter what, and um, that you know the whole love thing comes into trust. And I mean, I love my friends, and yeah. so I trust them. But um, because you know God <laughs> loves me, I feel that I can love Him back, um, yeah. and so I can trust Him all more. Yeah. That's that's wonderful, and and it just shows that the, the true you was always there, and mm -hmm. that even times when you didn't believe in yourself and and didn't feel that you were important or precious, pretty, um, and a, and a good person, that God saw that in you anyway, mm -hmm. even though you didn't see it. Do you believe that's true? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> how does he? Feel, how does God feel about you, Verity? He loves me and he 
I know that, um, you know, I'm his child and I'm his princess and um, that he cares about me no matter what.